All right, so we're going to pick up here with the geriatric acetabulum fractures. In the first set of slides, really just went through a basic review of the letternel fracture types uh, for acetabulum fractures. I didn't really get into too much about you know, which ones you see more often in uh, geriatric uh, patients. Um, so let's get into that now. So you have um, some, some patterns that are seen in the geriatric population. Uh, firstly, you get, a lot, you get a preponderance of anterior column involvement. Okay, you also see these protrusio patterns where the femoral head kind of like blows through the quadrilateral plate a little bit and dislocates medially. And then I did mention this in the last set of slides. You can get this dome comminution, which is not seen that often in younger patients. And it's very unfortunate because uh, it's right, that's the one place you don't want to get comminution. And you also get impaction. You get this marginal impaction up in the dome in some patients, which is very devastating. So makes it challenging, uh, makes the treatment very challenging, um, you know, if you're going to do ORAF for these. So here's an example of uh, all of those, right? So you have sort of this uh, protrusio, you have this dome impaction uh, up in here. So, uh, you know, here's probably some of the intact dome, and then it just kind of is gone here. Uh, maybe this is a piece of it here. Maybe this is a little bit of it here. Uh, you have this disruption of the quadrilateral plate. Uh, the fracture coming down this way, uh, and you can see that uh, you know the quadrilateral plate has been uh, you know kind of pushed into the pelvis here, and can't tell on this X-ray if there's also posterior column involvement, um, but uh, it looks like there might be. Here's uh, our Jude views, uh, iliac oblique on the top left, and the uh, obturator oblique down here. And the obturator oblique, you can see you know, a tremendous protrusio. Uh, significant uh, involvement of that quadrilateral plate anterior column is disrupted. Um, so, you know, not good, right? I mean, clearly uh, any fixation strategy here is going to have to require buttressing all that back over to get the head back over, right? So you have to kind of get in here and bring this back back over and then deal with the dome comminution. So here you can see, you know, very comminuted acetabulum fracture, small posterior wall fracture, but this is not the unstable uh, hip dislocating out the back type of posterior wall fracture. So um, sometimes you have to go after these, sometimes not. In this case, just getting the femoral head out was, uh, you know, and then buttressing everything in there was attempted. So you can see uh, a strategy commonly used in uh, many acetabulum fracture types, which is the uh, um, uh, traction pin or the um, shans pin, I should say, on a T-handle chuck uh, or on some device pulling pulling the femoral head out this way. Uh, and then you can see the uh, angled uh, pelvic uh, forceps, often the asymmetric forceps uh, can be helpful here to try and buttress. You can also use, um, instead of just the point, these patients often have soft bone, you may sometimes have to affix a spike disc or some type of similar device onto your ball spike pusher uh, to prevent these from going into the, you know, straight through the bone. Uh, but here you can see it as an attempt being made. Um, it's still, you still have this sort of a little bit of incongruence, right? Here's this subchondral shadow and then here's the other one up here. So um, it better, but still not perfectly congruent, possibly from uh, some impaction. Uh, and you can see um, uh, some semblance of reduction here. Uh, still some disruption up in here. Uh, this is a uh, plate being applied um, um, from the stopa window or the uh, um, infrapectineal approach, intrapelvic approach. Uh, and you can see that um, you know, status post fixation, you still have a little bit of this, you know, impaction maybe and step off up here, right? But for the most part, the posterior column here, right, that looks like it's reasonably reduced. And it looks like the head is in there, uh, a little washed out on this x-ray. You can see it's certainly been an attempt to, to buttress everything from that infrapectineal approach. Okay, but um, what you can see is, uh, in this case, you can still end up with just a little bit of medial uh, migration of, uh, of, the, of the femoral head. So uh, these can be tricky. So here's another ex uh, case example very similar uh, type of fracture pattern where you can see in a nice coronal CT here. This is a very nice example of that dome impaction, right? So you can see here's the um, 
uh, acetabular dome, and then you can see this part here. You can see how it's dense and impacted up here, right? So this fragment here has been, you know, presumably was supposed to be here and is now up there, okay? Um, Jude views uh, obturator oblique view hearing showing the uh, the medial displacement as well. So you know this is also fixed with a standard actually brim plate this time, but also uh, an infrapectineal uh, plate that's the shorter one here to try and buttress that quadrilateral plate in there. Um, but with uh, possibly inadequate uh, uh, fixation and uh, again. Um, it, the, the, the forces of that femoral head trying to go in uh, can be difficult to control and uh, perhaps the, this was not uh, enough uh, fixation to hold that in there and you can see that the head drifts into the pelvis. So so these are you know clearly challenging but th those are kind of like what a lot of those fractures look like. So um, David Helfitt's group has uh, you know reported on this uh, operative treatment of the acetabular fractures uh, through limited alioinguinal approach. Uh, again, the, getting to that quadrilateral plate, getting to the anterior column, most of the time you're going to be going anterior on these. Um, and even in expert hands, 27% rate of eventual conversion to total hip um, in the standard ilioinguinal versus the uh, just doing the lateral two windows. Um, but uh, avoiding that medial window potentially can uh, decrease your blood loss, at least in their hands. Okay, so here's an example of that. Um, another approach on it is to just go uh, medial, right? So uh, in this uh, series, Mike Archdeacon and others showed um, they treated these with uh, uh, both pelvic brim but also infrapectineal plates. And similarly, a good number of these one in five go on to total hip arthroplasty. Um, this dome impaction is a real concern and here's one way uh, you can see how it can be addressed. Here's an example of that dome impaction and um, intraoperatively through the infrapectineal window. Okay, so here's the patient. Feet are this way. Okay, head is this way. Um, you're oper the, op the, the surgeon is operating on the opposite side of the patient. So when you do these stopa windows and you do these infrapectineal approaches, typically you have to stand on the opposite side. So remember, uh, the, the femoral head is in here, it's trying to come this way, so you want to come on this side and buttress up against it. Okay, so here's the exposure, um, uh, obturator vessels, uh, external iliac vessels up here, uh, pelvic brim, um, and this shows what you can do. So remember, there's that dome impaction, right, right in here that you're trying to deal with. So how do you get it down? Well, this is one possible way. So standing on the opposite side of the patient here, actually, it's shown opposite from here. The feet are this way. The head is this way. But you're standing on the opposite side of the fracture, and they get in with this angled instrument and try to, like, basically push it down, okay? And try to, like, then maybe bone graft underneath that. So that's that's one possible way to deal with that. And then what they do is they, they put, like, um, you know, like a screw, you can put bone graft and then you can put like a rafting screw above it like you would for like a tibial plateau fracture to try and like hold that fragment down, okay? So this is a nice example of uh, that particular technical trick to deal with the dome combination. You need to have like a nice sizable piece that you can actually get in there and push down. What about functional outcome? Well, as I said, a lot of these go on to total hip arthroplasty. Uh, in, in this study uh, is from Adam Starr um, uh, out at the Parkland where they do a lot of uh, minimally invasive uh, treatment for these. Functional outcomes in elderly patients uh, with acetabulum fractures treated with minimally invasive reduction and percutaneous fixation. So these were not open. These were treated with uh, like long column screws, for instance. Um, similar uh, perhaps a little bit higher total hip uh, conversion rate. Again, all these series don't have uh, you know hundreds of patients um, or anything. Here's an example: uh, acetabulum fracture treated with percutaneous uh, reduction and uh, uh, long cannulated screws. Of course, imperfect reduction. This is a case that went on to get a total hip, um, but to, just to sort of show the uh, the screw technique. Here's another example um, of a uh, 
displaced uh, anterior column type fracture treated with uh, treated with uh, percutaneous fixation, but with reduction uh, percutaneously as well. Uh, what about doing uh, total hip and fixing them? So one thing I mentioned in the first set of slides was uh, when you have a fracture and you have poor bone, if you're going to do a total hip, the cup can be prone to loosening and loss of fixation. Okay, um, so this is a real challenging thing. We say, well, why don't you just do a total hip for that? Well, you still got to get a cup in there and get it to hold. So uh, in this series, uh, they um, actually did standard ORAF and then immediate total hip arthroplasty. So get the posterior column fixed, try to get it as stable as possible, uh, and then put in a cup. Because if it's not stable, especially if you have these transverse fracture patterns, it's very much like um, a situation of revision total hip arthroplasty where you have a so-called you know, bone loss with pelvic discontinuity, a term you may hear, uh, um, by the total joint surgeons. Um, so you try to prevent that by at least fixing the columns uh, and then you get your, and perhaps you post your wall as well while you're there posteriorly and then you do a total hip. Okay, and these are big cases, right? So uh, four hour surgery, probably in experienced hands, uh, probably longer in inexperienced hands, a lot of blood loss, uh, but uh, then, you, then you don't have to worry about those late conversions if you do them right away. Um, another case uh, series, uh, acetabular fractures in the elderly treated with um, uh, Birch Schneider reinforcement rings, bone grafts, and arthroplasty. So again, when you have these fractures, you can't just put in your standard uncemented cup and just jam it in there. Uh, you need some revision type uh, and uh, um, implants, and you need to sort of think about like you're dealing with uh, revision with bone loss, etc. Uh, and you obviously need somebody experienced with doing that. Uh, just an example of uh, uh, that type of uh, device being used with a total hip arthroplasty in this fracture pattern. Um, another series from Dr. Helfit, uh, a little bit more recent, 30% um, uh, percent conversion to uh, total hip still. And this is just an algorithm. Uh, if you want, you can pause this, take a look at it. I'm not going to go through it in detail. Uh, but again, there's a lot of treatment decisions when you're uh, thinking about these patients. You know, do you do anything? Are they non-operative? Um, and if you're going to operate on them, do you fix them? Do you do a total hip? Um, uh, do you just wait and do a total hip later? I mean, that's, that's another option. So these are all the typical strategies you should think about. Um, uh, certainly with ORAF. There's a frequent use of anterior approaches, so you have to be really familiar with that um, for treating these fractures. Uh, sometimes there's a role for percutaneous fixation, which I touched on and go into too much, uh, which certainly potentially has its advantages. Uh, maybe you want to think about uh, doing a total hip at the same time, although you have to consider the fact that uh, you need to have uh, revision techniques on hand, revision implants on hand. Um, and we didn't really talk about locked plating, but uh, interestingly, even uh, now in 2015, locked plating in the pelvis is still really not a place that you see it used very often as we do everywhere else. Um, okay, thank you very much. I hope that uh, gives you some tips and pointers about uh, geriatric acetabulum fractures. Thanks.